God says since we didn't keep God, since we didn't keep his commandments, one of the curses is that these other nations are gonna be above us. Because they're not, they're not supposed to be above us right now. We're gonna put in the Bible, they're supposed to be our slaves. But they don't teach that in the Christian church. Why? Because that goes against their doctrine. Yeah. Christian church is a business. Yeah. They want your money. They don't want you to repent. Are y'all from South Carolina? Y'all from South Carolina? If I travel to Georgia, right? And I go to the hood, who, who I'm gonna see there? Black. You gonna see black people? Yeah. If I go to Nebraska and I go to the low poverty area, who I'm gonna see? Black. If I go to Texas and I go to Section 8 housing and public housing, who I'm gonna see? Black. If I go to the projects, who I'm gonna see? Black. Why is that? Bring it out. Why is it in every state? If I go and see my people, we are in the lowest state. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some people that live well off, you know, have houses, cars, and all that stuff. But as a majority of people, where are we located? And there's a reason for that. God says since we didn't keep God, since we didn't keep his commandments, one of the curses is that these other nations are gonna be above us. Because they're not, they're not supposed to be above us right now. We're gonna put in the Bible, they're supposed to be our slaves. But they don't teach that in the Christian church. Why? Because that goes against their doctrine. Yeah. Christian church is a business. Yeah. They want your money. They don't want you to repent. I just left the church actually, you know what I'm saying? Because one of the uh, bishops told me he said, he said, Brian, I gotta let you know something. He said, you have to try to save souls. He said, that's a business for us. Man, I, I debated my pastor when I was yeah. 17 when I came to truth. I told him, it's what you teach in truth. This man said, some of the Bible being mistranslated is not really true. And this is a pastor telling me this while well, I'm a young man. How in, how's your pastor going to tell you that he's supposed to be a so-called man of God? He don't believe in the Bible, right? Because these pastors, they're not, they're not taught to teach you God's word. They teach to run a business. Right. Christian church, that's a business. Root you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. Uh -huh. The stranger that is within thee. So when we left out of Egypt, there was other nations that we took on as our captives. He says, and that stranger, read, that is within thee uh -huh. shall get up above thee very high. He's gonna get us up, he's gonna get up above us very high. Now, how, how can how can we look at that and see that today? Every denomination higher than us. Not not religion. You see this right here? What is yeah. it called? The activity activity center, right? Yeah. If you go into the actual process of how everything worked, we did not build this ourselves. Right. You had to have a mortgage company, a construction company, everything that come and build this place. Right. Take a look at everything around you as far as departments. The they built everything for us and we inhabited it. We're their slaves. They take care of us. They became above us very high. Read. And thou shalt come down very low. And we're going to be their slave. You understand? This is a curse against God. This is a curse that kept it to our people. Because right. we don't own anything in America. We may make that, see, a dish, right? Quote unquote, they gave a deal to what's in there, run DMC to push that brand. But they see actually own that brand. They see made, he, he, he owns that brand. He, own, he owns Adidas. Run DMC. He don't own that brand. No. I'm gonna go further than that. Your t-shirt, you don't own the test I come in to produce that. You don't own the feel, the cotton feel to produce that, that texturized cotton, right? Right. Because none of the stuff, God, when he says God said he's gonna put us above, I mean, below everybody else, he meant that. As far as our food. Give me uh, 28 verse uh, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So I want you to forget the thought because we didn't keep God's commandments, God says we're going to serve our enemies. And what? Which the Lord shall send against and thee. the key thing. God said our enemies against us. Why? Because we broke his commandments. Read. In hunger. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Read on. In hunger uh -huh. and in thirst. So you ate anything today? What you eat? We can go to your background. What you ate today, bro? You can say a sandwich or something. You no. Know? Sandwich. sandwich, right? Yeah. We go further. Where did you buy that bread from to get to make that sandwich? Yeah, Dell store. The Dell store. Who owns that Dell store? The, the white man or the Indian? We don't own anything as far as what we eat. Look, don't you take a look at this. You, we, we say we men, right? We right. men. We, 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 we discipline ourselves to know. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. If I have a goal, I'm gonna go for it. We don't have no goals. We don't have no discipline to do anything. Uh, read uh, verse 48 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee, uh -huh. in hunger and in thirst. So in hunger and in thirst, we're going to serve our enemies for, the, for food and for drink, right? Now my question to you is, we say we're men. Why do we as men have to go to a different nation people to eat, to actually buy food from? If I want food, I have to go to my enemy to get food from him. Because why God said we're going to be below that nation of people. We don't. And in nakedness. Uh -huh. So in the clothes on your back. This shirt may say Israelite Christ, 
But our organization don't own these shirts. You understand? We don't own the actual textile company to make these shirts or the uh, or the the graphics to put on this shirt. You understand? That's what it says. You should serve your enemies for the one of all things. Read. And the one of all things. Uh -huh. And he so shall. What? And he. So the enemy that God said going to serve, he should do what? Shall put a yoke of iron he's upon. Gonna, he's going to put a yoke of iron upon thy what? Upon thy neck. So now, on that flyer, right? Take a look at your flyer. He says, God says he's going to put a yoke of iron on the enemy. He's going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. On the front page, do you have the iron? Is there a yoke of iron upon thy neck? That's that's what God said. That's the prophecy of the Bible. That happened to our people. You understand? This Bible is a true book. It's a black man's book. Right? Right. Now, to further, to further uh, test spirits, right? Because we always like test spirits. You, we, we all have something for God. Let me give you one law right quick, and I'm going to break down some more here to you. Give me First Corinthians right quick. 11. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So God said, this is God body. He said, and every man, every man head is Christ. So Christ is our governor. He's our king. This, this is order. This is rulership right here. It's leadership. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read that part again. And the head of the woman is the man. I told you to read it again because why? Black women today, they don't want you ruling them, do they? We we can talk, right? Black men, well, we love our black women, but today they don't respect they don't respect God's order. Right, I'm read from top again. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So it's Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. And there's man and then there's woman. So woman's head is the man head, right? You know, and the head of Christ is God. So there's God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order in God's God system. That's his blueprint, right? We don't. Every man praying or prophesying. So right now we're prophesying you God's words. So it says every man praying or prophesying, having what? Having his head covered. Uh -huh. Dishonoreth his head. It says every man praying or prophesying or hearing the words of prophecy, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when God's words coming out, what must you do? So when God's word is coming out, what must you do? Huh? You was listening. You was listening. Read again. What you, what you hear? Hear, hear? hear what the Bible saying. Every man praying or prophesying, huh? having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. What that mean? You're supposed to take your hat off when God's word is coming out. You understand? So you're going to do it? I'll pray some more, son. Now, that, that, that just to prove that we know we love God, we hear God's words, right? All right. So what, what had you on before that? Go, go back to uh, Dormant 28. What we're bringing out is black history, right? Let me, tell, let me ask you a question. How did we get here to America? Hey, huh? Huh? Tell you, we, brought, we, got, we got on slave ships, right? Now, would it be crazy if we can actually read that in the Bible? And it pinpoints how we got to the side here? Read it out. This is actually in the Bible. This is biblical history. But we don't study. We don't want to study because why? We know if we study, we're going to have to change. That's facts. Bible speaks on slavery, right? So read what you got in 28, uh, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh -huh. with ships. So now, any of y'all know about the history, right? We went over briefly in Deuteronomy, right? I mean, uh, earlier Deuteronomy, when we left out of Egypt. Well, out of, in Exodus, when we left out of Egypt, the big exile out of Egypt. God says, read it from the top again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So now, how do we leave Egypt the first time? It's all good, hey. A lot of people don't know the history. Cause why? There's a reason why we don't know the history. They don't want you knowing that. They'll show you a movie, but they want you going to the actual depths of what God is saying. So God says he's going to bring us to Egypt again with ships. Now, Egypt, it means a different word. It, does, it doesn't mean the actual meaning of what we call the continent of Egypt in this passage right here. It means something else. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. It's like, it's like a slang word, right? That's, that's how black people talk. God is a black man, so you know our slang words. Read from the top again. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Huh? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He brought us out of the land of Egypt. Out of what? Out of the house of bondage. So what is Egypt? Bondage. What's another word for bondage? Meaning slavery, captivity, right? So now if we go back to 2868, he's telling us what he's actually meaning to us because he's speaking in what? In slang terms. He's giving us a, 
a brief history of what's going to happen again. Right? Read on for top again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God says he's going to bring us into Egypt again, meaning slavery, again with what? With ships. So how did a black, Hispanic, and Native American man get here to the side of America? On slave ships. We're reading the Holy Bible. Now you should ask you. They broke it down how they came over here. Exactly. But they just didn't say the name of the ship. They call it what? They call it a good Jesus slave ship, right? Mocking us. Mocking Israelites. Right? Let me ask you. By your whole time standing for like 10 minutes, have you, have you ever heard this in the Christian church? Have your grandparents ever told you this? Why I want to tell you that? Let me show you why we fail from our greatness, right? Read what you got. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Huh? And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. So this is why we don't know who we are today. Because we discontinue from our heritage. What comes with our heritage? Let me ask you that. What, you ever had Indian friends growing up? Any of y'all East Indian? Like, uh, play, like uh, elementary school, middle school? You, if you look at East Indians, they have that garments, they have that gods, they have that culture, right? What is our culture? Was it basketball, fried chicken, grape soda? That's what they put on television, right? But what is our culture really? Our culture is having fringes. Our culture is having a beard. Our culture is observing a Sabbath day. Our culture is keeping feasts of dedication. Passover, Pentecost, all that stuff is our culture, but they don't teach us that. Why? Because we fail from our heritage. We don't. And thou, even thyself, uh -huh. shalt discontinue from thine heritage uh -huh. that I gave thee. Who gave you? That I gave so thee. God gave our heritage, right? And God, when God gives us a heritage, he wants us to keep his heritage and pass it on to our generations ever as a as a signet of how we should be acting in these in these uh, times to come, right? Read on. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. And here's the key part. Now we're serving our enemies because we left our heritage. You got that in uh in uh apocrypha? Yeah, gotcha. So let me show you what our actual heritage is, because it's, it's all this gonna lined up. When God said he gave you laws, such as commandments, and you gave you heritage. I'm going to show you those are combined. Those are the two same things. So when we don't keep God's laws, we don't know our heritage. Read what you got. So Rob, chapter 17 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Beside this, uh -huh. he gave them knowledge. So God gave the children of Israel knowledge. Read. And the law of life uh -huh. for, an inherit for an heritage. And the laws of God for an heritage. Because what you, what you realize, we start studying God's laws, it's our heritage. For one example, let me show you one heritage we should be keeping. Give me numbers 15 and 38 right quick. Because you see these in our shirts, right? That's probably, that probably identifies like, what the heck is on that shirt? You walk up past, and you see this thing blowing in the wind. But let me show you, God says we must keep this commandment. Because that's a law. This is our heritage, right? We don't. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 37. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. So, once again, God is only dealing with the Israelites. He says, Speak unto the children of Israel and do what? And bid them. Uh -huh. That they make them fringes. So it says, command them that they make them fringes in what? In the borders of their garments. In the borders of your garments, right? Read on. Throughout their generations. Throughout your generation. What's your generation? What's your generation? Yeah, what's your generation? When God says, I want you to do this throughout your generations, what does that mean? Huh? Huh? It's a life that should carry out, right? Let me ask you a question. You had fathers growing up? Okay, so does your father teach you how to cook something, right? So the same thing, he, you always gonna teach your children how to do certain things. So when it came to this, God says, look, when y'all get older, I will try to keep the same law that my father's taught my, that my father taught me, that I'm gonna teach y'all. So why? You should teach your children, that's throughout your generations, right? We don't. And that they put upon the fringe huh? of the borders a ribbon of blue. So on this fringe, you're gonna have a ribbon of blue. And that's the law of God. Cause it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna signify for you to do something. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, Read. that ye may look upon it uh -huh. and remember all the commandments of the Lord, Read. and do them. So once you keep these commandments, and you put your fringes on, you're gonna remember to do all the commandments. If you're going off or you start to think outside what God wants you to do, you just rubbing your fringes or look at your fringes, and you're supposed to remember God's commandments. Let me show you another one. Leviticus 21:5. Let me show you another law. Cause I see you have a beard, right? You got a beard. There's a reason why men should have beards, right? Let me show you something right quick. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So God said you're not supposed to make baldness upon your head. You're not supposed to shave your head bald, right? Right. Neither shall they shave off 
the corner of their beard. And you're not supposed to shave off the corners of your beard. Richie, hey, whoever's calling you, they don't want you to hear this law. I'm going to tell you right now, everything is spiritual, bro. All right, so let me ask you a question. Do you shave your beard? Nah. You don't? You just can't grow it? I mean, not this special, you just can't grow yeah, it like I that? I just cut it. You know, I don't really do it. So you can't, mar, you can't mar your beard. You're not supposed to shave your beard, all right? That's it. That's, that's what a guy loves, not to shave your beard. Because men must keep your beard. Why? Why don't? Why can't women grow hair on their on their face, but men can? Look, just this nature alone. If you go into the wild, into the jungle, how can you dictate a line? How can you take, how can you dictate a male line from a female line? Y'all don't see the, all the the main line they said. The beard. That's that. That's that royal dignity, right? God says you're not supposed to shave your beard. You can cut it down, make it look nice. You know, obviously have it, you know, shape it up nicely. Mine can't really go that well, so I gotta shape it up time to time, right? But that's a law of God. You can't shave or you can't mar your beard, right? Let me get you another one. Give me uh, Aziz 35, the Sabbath day. Because one thing we break to is the Sabbath day. Friday nights and Saturday nights. We like going out, partying, cooking, all this stuff. But what does God tell you to do on the Sabbath day? What, what is the Sabbath day? Let me ask you that. I gave it away. Let me see y'all listen because I gave it away. What is the, when is the Sabbath day? What day is the Sabbath day? Day? Yeah, what day? What day after week is the Sabbath day? You said Sunday? Why why you say Sunday? Is Sunday the seventh day? Put put out your phone right quick, go to the calendar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the white men say what day it is. That's the funny thing about it, because they know but it still go against what they taught. On your calendar, what day says first of the week? Sunday. Saturday is the Sabbath day according to God. Right? Saturday. That's the, that's according to God. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So God says to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy? By not buying, not selling, not cooking. Because the holy means to be separate. The other nations, they have that, they have that idols. They can do what they want to. But God, he told us, the black the Americans, my Sabbath day, you keep it holy. There should be no buying, there should be no selling, there should be no cooking. You should be congregating and keeping God's laws and teaching God's words on that day. That's a law. Says a form of fasting for you? What do you mean by that? Fasting? Oh, fasting. You talking about fasting? And all praises, you know, you're supposed, to not, you're supposed to not eat food or drink anything, right? And you're supposed to be from sundown to sundown. That's how you get your mind right with God, but. Let me ask you, give me John 9 31 right quick. Because you could be fasting, right? But will God honor that fast? Right, if you're not keeping his commandments. You're, and you answer your own question. You know what I'm saying? Look, you got knowledge, you just need to come in. You know what I'm saying? Learn, right? So uh, give me that John right quick. Let me show you something. John chapter 9 and verse 31. Uh -huh. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. Read that part again. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. A lot of people can't cope with that. We'll read, we'll read that passage, we'll read that scripture, and it said, no, not my Jesus. But what did God say, though? But if any man be a worshiper of God uh -huh. and doeth his will, him he heareth. So when you fast and pray, you must be keeping God's commandments. That's the only way he hear you, right? So without you keeping God's commandments, he's not hearing your prayers. He's not, he's not upsetting your fast. I know it's kind of hard to, to think because you may think, well, damn, what's going on in my life? How my life been like this and been going this certain way? That wasn't God. Everything we bring out to you, it's going to do something to you, right? I mean, we're not preaching to a dead air. You know what I'm saying? Because when you start learning and realizing God laws, you must do something. You must act upon it. That's like if I put something, what's going to happen? He's going to fall down or I'm going to hurt myself trying to push it. We're telling you guys words, so change must happen within your people, within our people. Read what you got. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. So God says you're going to know the truth. And what's the truth going to do? And the truth shall make you free. What is the truth? What's the truth of God? The laws of God. Hey, you are real knowledgeable, but you need to come in, man, for real. You answer a lot of these questions, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Give me Psalms 119. Psalm chapter 119, verse 142. Huh? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So God laws is a righteousness and everlasting righteousness, read. And thy law and thy what? And thy law. So God laws is what? Is the truth. So you're correct. God laws is the truth. So once you know God laws, it's gonna make us free. How is it gonna make us free? Because are, are we still slaves today? Slavery and state of mind. You said slavery and state of mind, yes, 
and physical slavery. And you as a man yourself, you can walk down that street, you can walk down there, technically you quote unquote free to roam about your beans, right? But to leave this country, do you need a passport? You need an identification card, you need a social security card. Let me go further, do you still pay taxes? You do, right? You're still a slave. Let me brew three and eight. Baruch chapter three and verse eight. Uh -huh. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So he said, God says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Where we doing what? Where thou hast scattered us. And where we have scattered us. Right now, we're in South Carolina. My ancestors were brought here from West Coast of Africa and docked at South Carolina. That's why my bloodline is still here. Because we still slaves in this land today. Right? We don't. For a reproach uh -huh. and a curse. Uh -huh. And to be subject to, be what? subject to, what? to payments. And that's your taxes. That's you paying bills, because why you still a slave? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.